Juiced, presented by Points Bet Sportsbook. I'm the prop queen, Ariel Epstein. Lots of baseball to get to. Pretty short slate of games yesterday. One game that I gave out, it got postponed to today, the Reds and the Angels, thanks to the hurricane. Not sure if anybody saw, Dodger Stadium was surrounded by a swamp. It's pretty nuts. Did give out a winner yesterday. Atlanta Braves, first three over, one and a half runs. Let's go, Atlanta Braves, scoring off the lefty David Peterson of the New York Mets. Got some recaps from yesterday. Also going to dive into tonight's slate of games, a bigger slate in baseball. We're coming down to the wire, people. It is the end of August. We've got about five weeks left of the Major League Baseball season. A team like the Chicago Cubs has resurged since the All-Star break. They beat the Tigers yesterday 7-6, minus 136 on the money line at points bet sportsbook for Chicago. The Cubs had a 4-2 lead into the sixth inning. The Tigers put up a three spot in the bottom of the eighth, ties the game up at five. Cubs then go up to, they put, they put two runs on the board at the top of the ninth, held on just by the skin of their teeth because Detroit did score one run in the bottom of the ninth, yet the Cubs won 7-6. Cubs right fielder, Seiya Suzuki. He's had five home runs in 13 games this month. He has been hitting 333 this month, which is the best month of the 2023 season for Suzuki. Chicago's now on a three-game win streak, took a half-game lead over the Giants for the second wild card spot in the National League. Do not rule out the Chicago Cubs. They have now lost all value to make the playoffs, minus 160, we gave it out on this show in plus money, around plus 120 a couple of weeks ago. Preseason gave out the Cubs over 76 and a half wins. The Cubs need 12 more wins to hit 77. They're at 65 and 59. The Cubs, they have two more games against Detroit this series, seven more games this year against Pittsburgh, six more games against Colorado. If the Cubs do not hit the over of 76 and a half wins, you may as well just suspend me from all MLB futures for the next five years. The Cubs better go over with 12 more wins to get this season. The Arizona Diamondbacks making the NL wildcard interesting also. They beat the Rangers, the top of the AL West, the Texas Rangers. They fall 4-3 to three in 11 innings. Arizona was a home dog at plus 130. There was a reason for that, a good one, why Arizona was a home dog. First, Arizona was held scoreless, down one nothing into the ninth. They tie it up. Arizona second baseman, Catal Marte, solo shot off Texas reliever Araldis Chapman to send this game to extras. Shocker. How many times have I said when the Rangers got Araldis Chapman that was not going to solve their bullpen issues? Giving up home runs in clutch situations. There you go. Or all this Chapman, you have never changed. Arizona's left fielder, Tommy Famu, came over from the New York Mets at the trade deadline. He ends up with the walk-off double to center to win the game for Arizona. The D-backs threw a bullpen game. It's why they were underdogs at home. You got the lefty on the mound for Texas in Jordan Montgomery, who went eight scoreless innings with six strikeouts. Rangers' bullpen spoils it again. This is why the Texas Rangers are not a World Series contender. Okay, they are a contender. They're not going to be able to beat the Astros if that's what the AL comes down to. They probably can't even make it past the series with the Seattle bullpen. The only way that Texas wins is through their starting rotation going seven innings, which you need out of your ace, Max Scherzer, somehow. You need your lineup to continue to hit at this pace, which is the only reason the Rangers are really in the mix this whole season is because their lineup is lethal. I, I admit that. The bullpen has been bottom 10 all year for the Rangers. Araldo Chapman, not it. Texas only has a one-and-a-half game lead now in the Astros. It was up to three just a few days ago. Now, one-and-a-half game lead on the Astros. Even more interesting, you've got the Mariners right there which we'll get to in a little bit. I'll talk more about the AL in a second. The Diamondbacks, they pull a half game within San Francisco for that final wild card spot in the NL. The Padres are also going to keep things interesting. They beat the Marlins 6-2. to Padres second baseman, Hassan Kim, he hit a double. Uh, he had, I mean, he's just been on an absolute tear, Hassan Kim. Since the All-Star break has been the best Padres hitter on the team. Kim had a grand slam, a double, stole third. Uh, scored twice yesterday. 
He's kept the Padres in the mix for sure. Juan Soto, Manny Machado, Fernando Tatis Jr., they are all hitting below 250 since the All-Star break. The Padres are four games behind the Marlins for the final wild card spot. It's going to be fun at the end of the year because five and a half games back, Padres have two series left against San Francisco where they could definitely gain ground. The Padres end of the season, all they have to do is get past September 13th. They've got a really rough slide to start September until then. After September 13th, the Padres have Oakland, Colorado, St. Louis, San Francisco, and Chicago White Sox. You get within two to three, and you've got two series left against the Giants, who is in that last wild card spot, an easy last few weeks. There's still value to be had on those Padres making the playoffs. As for the Marlins, they lost five of their last six. Miami and San Diego play two more games in this series. The Marlins have to face Tampa Bay, the Dodgers, the Phillies, the Brewers twice, the Braves, all in September. Still in the more, like, beginning, middle part of September, not the end where if you play Atlanta, it doesn't matter because they're not going to need to really play anymore by the last week. And a wild card update, you've got the Phillies, minus 1,000 to make the playoffs. They've got a three-game lead in the number one spot of the wild card race. The Cubs, a half game up into the second spot. They're minus 160 now to make the playoffs. Giants, minus 110 in that final wild card spot to make the playoffs. Diamondbacks, plus 135, half game back of the Giants. Reds, a game back of the Giants, plus 210. Marlins, plus 190 to make the playoffs. Padres, 7-1. 7-1 is what you're getting the Padres at. That was the odds for the Padres to win the NL. Like, this is absurd. I say it's great value on San Diego. I know there's a lot of teams in this race. The the experienced teams in the end of the season do tend to stand out. Padres are experienced. Blake Snell's having an NL Cy Young type year. I don't trust the D-backs. They're very young. I don't trust their pitching. Zach Allen's only really been good at home this year. The Reds, too young. Their starting rotation's been hurt, and they're all below the age of, like, 25. Marlins, they've got a tough September. San. San Diego, 7-1. I have to give the credit to the Cubs, though. I am very proud of the Cubs. Not so proud of the White Sox, other side of Chicago. They got destroyed by the Seattle Mariners, 14-2. Saw the total at 8.5, but total seems kind of high for a White Sox team that doesn't really score, averaging about four runs a game. Seattle was minus 180 favorites. They had their righty Luis Castillo on the mound starting. Yet Seattle was still a minus 180 favorite despite not playing their all-star Julio Rodriguez. Finally gave him a day off, even though he's hitting like 400 in the last month. Didn't matter. Seattle's catcher, Cal Raleigh, homered twice, drove in six runs. In fact, since July 31st, Raleigh leads the majors with 10 home runs and tied for third with 20 RBI. Raleigh has the most home runs amongst MLB catchers this year with 24. That helps Seattle with their average of just under eight runs a game in their seven-game win streak. Seattle's 20-5 and five on the road this year since the start of July. Home road doesn't matter for the Mariners. Castillo started when seven innings, five hits, one earned run, nine strikeouts, third straight win for Luis Castillo and the Mariners. AL West, division ra- uh, the division race in the AL West. You got Texas minus 124, Houston plus 165, Seattle plus 350. Houston plus 165, I will say this until the last day of the season. The Astros, a game and a half back of the Rangers, still has value to win the American League West. The Chicago White Sox, they're done. They've lost 7 of 9. They've been outscored 68 to 37 in that stretch. Chicago starters have an ERA just below a 15 in the last four games. Sorry, White Sox fans. We did have our bet cast for uh, at for points bet on NBC Chicago last night. The White Sox fans, all they could do was make fun of me being a Yankees fan because they feel so badly about how this season has gone. I just feel bad that the White Sox are wasting Luis Robert. He's having a great year. You've got some talent on that roster, like a um, Dylan Cease or Tim Anderson. These players are just underachieving. Need the manager Griffel out need to clean house clearly you need a manager that can come manage these big personalities that are supposed to be all-stars the White Sox completely underachieved this year 
They're in a very easy division. They should be able to come back next season, add some key pieces, and make a run for that terrible central. AL wild card. The Tampa Bay Rays are minus 3,500 to make the playoffs. They've got the one spot, their four-and-a-half game lead into the one. Astros sitting in the second spot to make the wild card, uh, a half game back of the Rays, minus 500. Or, sorry, a half game up on the Mariners, the Astros, uh, minus 500 to make the playoffs. Which is funny because the Ma- the Astros are minus 500 to make the playoffs, yet they're pl- they have the third shortest odds to win the World Series. This should be longer. The Astros have better odds than the Rays to win the World Series, yet they're minus 500 to make the playoffs and the Rays are minus 3,500. Seems a little weird. Mariners, last wild card spot, they're minus 225 to make the playoffs. The Blue Jays minus 190, a game back of the Mariners to make the playoffs, and the Red Sox 8-1. It's pretty crazy because you think of the NL wild card and you've got so much value out there. Then you look at the AL and you've got minus 190, minus 225 as your two options for that final wild card spot. Red Sox aren't getting in. Eight to one, four games back. The Red Sox have a daunting September schedule. No thank you. No value in the AL wild card race. Honestly, the value's on the Astros at minus 500 to make the playoffs, believe it or not. If you're going to give me the third shortest wild card or the third shortest odds to win the World Series behind the Braves and the Dodgers, you're telling me the Astros minus 500 to make the playoffs? Get out of here. Should be longer than the Rays. World Series odds have definitely moved. You've got the Braves. Not a huge movement, but it's enough to tell you I don't think the Braves are getting back to longer than 3-1 to one this year. 3-1 to one for the last few weeks, now plus 285. They lost 10-4 to the Mets. Still, the odds move in their favor to win the World Series. Dodgers go 4-1 to one to plus 370. I told you I bet the Dodgers 4-1 to one win the World Series. These odds aren't ever going back in favor. Uh, aren't ever going back in your favor. These odds are staying, moving in the direction of those two teams winning a World Series, even potentially the Astros. Just go get it now. If you want the Braves or the Dodgers to win the World Series, buy it now. It's never going back. Coming up next, best bets for tonight's slate of games in Major League Baseball. Stay here on Basis Juice. Welcome back to Basis Juice, presented by PointsBet Sportsbook. Picks for a bigger slate of baseball games tonight. Yesterday, didn't have a lot to choose from. I'm going to the Bronx. I'm not actually going. God forbid. The Washington Nationals are facing the Yankees. I like the Nats on the run line, plus one and a half, minus 130 at PointsBet Sportsbook. Washington's righty, Josiah Gray, he's got a 2.82 ERA on the road this year. It's impressive. Gray is from New Rochelle, New York. First career start at Yankee Stadium. The Nats have the seventh highest OPS against left-handers. Who better to throw on the mound for the Yankees than a lefty? The one that's been struggling with a 6-1-1 ERA at Yankee Stadium this year, Carlos Rodon, coming off the IL with a hammy injury. The Yankees are averaging just over four runs a game at home this year, which is the sixth lowest in baseball. From a betting angle, Washington, second most profitable team on the run line this year when on the road. You're up just over 13 units this season if you've been betting every Nationals run line on the road. 38 and 22. Money line, you're up 17 units betting the Nats on the road, 28 and 31 straight up. Impressive for the Nats on the road this year, so that's why with the profit, I like taking the insurance at plus one and a half. Yankees have a good bullpen. If you want to sprinkle on the money line, you can. Yankees lefty Carlos Rodon, his strikeout props five and a half. I like the under. Rodon's got a 7.33 ERA. He's coming off the 15-day IL. In 2023, he's only faced one low K rate team. That was the Rays. He had five Ks in just over four innings pitched. However, the Rays compared to the Nats, they strike out a lot more. The Nats are one of the lowest K rate teams in baseball. Lefties are 16 and 27 over under their K prop this year against Washington. Lefty starters are averaging just under 4Ks a start facing the Nationals. With the line moving in favor of Washington overnight, I like the under. Five and a half Ks for Carlos Rodon. One of the World Series favorites, Los Angeles Dodgers. Bet him on the run line, minus one and a half at minus 125. Dodgers righty Bobby Miller, he's pitching. He pitches better on the road than he does at home with a 2-1-9 road ERA versus a 5-1-7 in, in L.A. Dodgers average the most runs per game in baseball when they're on the road at just under six. Guardians complete opposite. 
They average three and a half runs per game when they're at home. The second lowest in baseball. That's just in front of Oakland. Batters are hitting 376 the first time through against Guardians righty Noah Syndergaard. With the Dodgers being the fourth most profitable run line team on the road this year, just up under 11 units on the season. 35, 24, 35 and 24 on the run line when the Dodgers are on the road. Dodgers run line, minus one and a half. A play I gave out yesterday, not giving up on it until the trend decides to die. Braves first three over, one and a half runs, minus 130. Atlanta went over this in 15 of the last 19 games. Mets righty Tyler McGill has allowed two runs or more in the first three innings in all but one of his road starts this year. It's hot in Atlanta. The wind's blowing out. Atlanta's the fourth most profitable home overs team in baseball up just over eight units. Atlanta also third most profitable first five run line team up just under 14 units. The Braves have covered 41 of 65 run lines this year at home. That means that they're winning by a, one, a run or more, Atlanta, in all their first fives. You know that the Braves at home are favored in every first five. Braves, first three over, one and a half runs. Hitter pitcher matchups. This one's interesting. You know you've been in the league a long time when you have faced someone like Adam Marine Wainwright multiple times. I mean, I'm talking like I actually wish I wrote it down. It was a lot of it was a lot of at bats. Pittsburgh DH Andrew McCutcheon. He's hitting 299 with seven doubles, a triple, and three home runs against Wainwright in his career. Oldie but goodie. Arizona's second baseman, Cattell Marte, the hero yesterday in Arizona. He's hitting 455 with two doubles, a triple, two home runs against Texas righty John, uh, John Gray. Arizona's first baseman, Christian Walker, against Gray, hitting 385 with three, with three doubles and two home runs. Dodgers first baseman, Freddie Freeman, go figure. He's hitting 417, three doubles, a triple home run against Cleveland righty Noah Syndergaard. The Baltimore game's interesting. You got O's first baseman, Ryan, Mac Ryan Mountcastle. Mountcastle's hitting 583 with a double, four home runs against Toronto lefty Yusei Kikuchi. Crushing lefties, Mountcastle, hitting 356 against them this year. Catcher, Adley Rushman for the O's, hitting 357 with two homers against Kikuchi, hitting 312 against lefties this year, Rushman. I hope you guys got some winners from that. We'll be back tomorrow here on Basis Juice at Points Bet Sportsbook. I'm the proud queen, Ariel Epstein. Good luck with your bets. <laughs>